surface comb modifier in Ornatrix for Cinema 4D can be used to control both short fur and long hair with very little user input to produce uh, very easy and quick results. Let's quickly explore how this can be done. So uh, I just I'm going to use a standard fur ball setup on a sphere to show the effects of uh, of the surface comb. But uh, in later tutorials, we'll explore how to create an actual realistic hairstyle. So uh, at the end of my operator stack, I'm going to add a surface comb modifier. And uh, by default, it doesn't do anything. Uh, you can go and see that there is an algorithm drop down where you can select the uh, mesh vertex option or the triangulation option. And the mesh vertex is what was used in older versions of Ornatrix and it still can be used. The difference is that it will, um, it will use uh, mesh vertices to generate directions uh, for each strand and it will only affect a strand as a whole. It will not affect individual vertices. So I'm going to use triangulation option, which is the default for all newly created scenes and uh, surface comb instances. Uh, to start using this, you need to create something uh, called sinks. Uh, there is a add sync tool which you can click on this button to enable and once you add sync you just uh, click and drag on top of your mesh to create one or more syncs. When you create a sync all of the hairs will start following this sync's direction in uh, object space and uh, as the mesh deforms if you have an animated character the sync will deform along with the mesh. If I add more than one sync, so for example I add an opposite sync you can see that the hairs will be split between these two sinks and they will try to follow whichever sink is closest to each strand. I can add more sinks and when I add the third one here you can see that the hair is actually trying to faithfully follow the direction as uh, set by these three sinks and it will curve and deform itself to appropriately follow the, this direction. Once you have created a sync, you can always edit syncs. So all I have to do is click on the root of the sync to move it around the mesh. Or I can click on the tip of the sync to change its orientation relative to the surface of the mesh. There are a bunch of options to control here. Uh, for example, you see that there are certain areas where the hair doesn't know what to do uh, between the sinks, and uh, we can smooth the effect of, uh, of this transition. There is a smooth amount option here. If I decrease this, it's going to not do any smoothing at all, and uh, you will get more precise results at the expense of having potentially a little bit of uh, jagginess in your hairs as the segments uh, jump from one sink to another. Or you can increase this value to get more uh, smoother results. Of course, if you smooth this too much, you just end up with straight hair. So uh, the default value of 0 0.9 or something like this is uh, it's a pretty good. If you select the effect whole strand option over here, you will actually uh, define the length of each hair strand with the sinks. So as I drag the sink to increase its size, it will actually change the length of the hairs that are associated with the sinks. It is very useful to have this option because in some parts of the character you can create like really short fur and in other parts of the character you can make the fur much longer. There is also an option called stick to surface. If you uncheck this, the hair will continue along its trajectory whenever a surface uh, distribution mesh is not blocking its way. So here I have longer hairs which are going down and if I increase this, you can see that the hairs uh, don't really uh, don't really try to stick to the surface, they continue going along their trajectories, unlike the ones at the top, which are trying to stay outside of our base mesh. Below we have the slope ramp, and uh, this ramp defines the shape of the hair, which is perpendicular to the mesh. So the things that define the direction of the hair is relative to the mesh uh, surface, and this curve defines what the shape looks like uh, per perpendicular to the mesh direction. So. I can change this value. If I increase this, it's going to actually push the hairs closer to the surface. If I uh, decrease this, it's going to make them straighter. So if I really, really go to the extreme and push all the hairs in, you can see that the hairs just start following the direction of the mesh. Again, if I ch check uh, stick to surface on, all the hairs are going to continue sticking to the surface and um, and modifying the sinks will merely define their direction relative to the surface. But if I uncheck the stick to surface option, Unless the surface is blocking the way of the path of the hair, it's going to continue along its trajectory. And this is useful if you have like longer hair and the, uh, you know, at the end of the back of the character, you can have the hairs actually go down to create a nice looking hairstyle. 
We also have an option for uh, the bend values. You can uh, control if the how much the hair will bend uh, depending um, as defined by the slow prime parameter. So you can actually make it bend backwards a bit or you can curl it uh, a lot. So you can make it curl much more than default. But by default, this the default value of zero to one is pretty good, uh, pretty good setting. Then we also have the chaos parameter. This defines uh, how much randomness there is in the directions of the hairs as rel relative to their sinks. So if again, I, I make the hair follow the uh, surface much closer. Uh, if I increase this value, you can see that the hairs start to become a little bit more chaotic. And uh, also this value changes along the actual hair length. And you can change how much by changing the hair scale. So as you increase the scale, you're going to get a lot more high frequency uh, deformations or changes in each hair strand versus the uh, lower scale value. You can also control these values with a map or a channel. If you go down all the way down to the uh, selected sync attributes, or if you uncheck this object uh, field here and just go to the syncs, you can see the settings for the currently selected sync. Again, inside the viewport, you can click on a sync to select it. And once a sync is selected, these parameters over here will only apply to the current sync. So uh, you can change the uh, uh, sync type. Right now, uh, each sync is used to direct the hair. So uh, whichever direction you set specify, the hair is, try is going to follow this direction. You can also change it to repel the hairs. So is the sync will actually push apart the hairs um, at the point where they are located. And uh, uh, you can still change, increase or decrease the area of the sync to make it uh, uh, affect the hair strand length. Or you can also attract, so this will do the opposite of repel. Or, or this will attract all of the hairs towards the current sink. And um, you can also mirror the sinks. So if you set the mirror axis from none to something like X, uh, you can see that it will mirror this sink at the X axis. Again, if I move the sink, you can see the other one here. And if I change it the direction, you can see that the changes I make are mirrored on the other side and the other sink applies to the mirrored one. I'm going to uncheck this for now. Uh, the sync group parameter is very useful when you want to, to create parts between sinks uh, in the hair. For example, uh, by default there is no sync group, but I want this sync group to belong to group uh, one, while the other ones don't have a group. And now, whichever uh, changes I make to the sync, all the hairs that are affected by it will not be affected by the other two sinks. Uh, if I set this sync's value to 1 as well, then only the hairs that are closest to these two sinks will have interpolation between them, while the third sink, which doesn't have any value assigned to it, will not affect these two hairs. This behave uh, identical to the strand groups that are used between operators and owner tricks, which means that you can specify uh, a pattern, so, or you can specify a list, like you can say this uh, sync group belongs to both value of one and two, uh, and maybe this sync groups sync uh, has a group of two. So now what we have is that uh, the top sync will interact with the hairs that are closest to both itself and the other two sinks, while these other two sinks will not have any kind of uh, inter interpolation uh, of the hairs between them. You can also override the individual uh, sync ramps. So we saw before what happens when you have a sync uh, ramp and how you control the hair shape based on it. If you check this override slope ramp option here, then you can specify the curve just for the selected sync. So I can control the hairs just for this one sync without affecting the other sinks. And you can do other things like uh, delete sync. Again, this is a very useful modifier if you want to control large amounts of hair, such as fur or even like character hairs, uh, where you can quickly and easily define a base hairstyle for, for a character without really uh, putting much work into it and with the ability of going back in the future and uh, editing any part of it because things are extremely easy to manipulate. They're very straightforward to understand. They will deform with your character, so they work well with animation. And uh, you can do things like symmetry and other things.